happy voice. Hello, I'm Helen Good, and I'm a part of the Elizabethan Star Chamber project, which is trying to make sense of the National Archives class stack five. And I'm joined by some of the wonderful and talented members of the Beyond Shakespeare Company, who have kindly agreed to read some Star Chamber with me. Following the Beyond Shakespeare method, we're just going to read and discuss. Our readers today are Alan. Hi, Alan, based in Suffolk. Sarah. Sarah Blake, actor, writer and director based in Germany. Liza. Liza Graham, based in London. Emma. Hello, I'm Emma Kemp. I'm an actor and I'm in London. Rachel. Rachel, actor on the East Coast. And finally, but by no means least, Eric. Hi, I'm Eric. I'm based in the dark. And today's case is Calverley and Seagrave, which is from Leicestershire in 1586. And we start the Bill of Complaint with Rachel. To the Queen's most excellent majesty, most humbly showeth unto your majesty, your obedient subject, Hugh Calvary of Lay in the county of Chester Esquire, that whereas Sir George Calv Calvary, knight deceased, was lawfully seized in his demesne of fee of and in the manner of Scalford within the country of Leicester, Leicester, and so being seized, took and received the issues, rent, and revenues of the and uh, of the same during his life, and thereof died seized. After whose death the said manor in descended and came to your sad subject as brother and heir of the said jo said Sir George by and after whose death that your said subject entered into the said manner and the issues and profits thereof took by himself and his tenants and farmers. So if it is, so it is, sorry. If, I, if it may please your majesty that one Rafe Seagrave, gentleman Robert Wright and John Tett, not uh, regarding your majesty's laws nor statutes nor punishments thereof, have of late, that is to say, the 18th day of August in the 7th and 20th year of your majesty's reign at Sculford aforesaid, within the said county of Leicester, riotously and unlawfully together with a great number of other lewd and evil disposed persons here said subject unknown with staves, pitchforks, swords, bucklers, and other weapons, as well invasive as defensive, assembled themselves together in great routs and there continued by a long space in great terror and affray of Her Majesty's said subjects there inhabiting. And the said Rafe Seagrave gentlemen, Robert Wright and John Tett, having in their company the said lewd and ill-disposed persons, did there, then and there, the said 18th day of August, riotously and with force and arms against the Queen's Majesty's peace, enter into the said manor of Scalford, and the stone walls, fences and enclosures in and about one close, parcel of the domain of the said manor, called or known by the name of Myry Close, which said close hath been and continued enclosed, edged and mounded these three score years and above, hath pulled down, raised and cast down to the ground, contrary to the Queen's Majesty's laws and statutes in such a case and provided. It may therefore please your Majesty, the premises considered and to the intent such malefactors may receive such condign punishment for the offences according to law so as they and such like malefactors may be hereafter restrained from such outrage so committed to the breach of your majesty's laws and the terror of your highness subjects thereabout inhabiting. It may please your majesty to grant to your said subject your majesty's writ of subpoena 
directed to the said Rafe Seagrave, Robert Wright, and John Tett, commanding them and every of them thereby to appear before your majesty in the star chamber at Westminster at a day therein to be prefixed to answer to the premises and to abide such further order as the court shall think meet and your said subjects shall daily pray for your most gracious long and happy reign. Well, straightforward enclosure riot happened all the time. Someone enclosed some land, the neighbors got together, pulled it down, maybe fighting off other people at the same time. Uh, happened for a long time. Enclosure riots go back a long way and they continue a long way into the future. Rachel. So by enclosure, do they mean something like a fence, like there to represent the property line? Was it, uh, you know, something like, because uh, there's a thing when they were doing with the American West, how uh, a lot of it gets fenced off after a while because people don't want uh, the cattle to come and graze on, uh, to graze on um, the crops, the crops. Hmm. Yeah, it, the... The owner of the manor, uh, the agricultural England seems to have been divided into manors. And these manors, there was often, if you had land on, in, the, in the manor, you also had certain rights over the common of the manor. So at certain times of the year, you could put your pigs in, or you had the right to an ox gang. That is, your ox could gang into it. Um, and so you've got the beast gates and the ox gangs and whatever. But gradually farming was changing and the common fields and the common areas were being taken over and put into intensive cultivation and it was the lord of the manor who was doing it and obviously everybody else got upset there was a poem much later that it was um i can't remember the exact words but the the uh, a man would be punished for stealing the goose from the common but there was very little punishment handed out to those who stole the common from the goose and um, th this is this is you would say a, a, a classic um, enclosure riot. Uh, however, it possibly isn't. Oh, sorry, Eric. So basically, in an enclosure, uh, as we've sort of discussed, you know, sort of what they are and so on and so forth. Would that then mean that if there is an enclosure riot, the people who instigated our trespassing or is there no such thing <laughs> at this point in time oh yeah there's lots of trespassing yes yeah yeah uh sorry sorry uh, um sarah was first then liza um I, you've probably said this already but i missed it when when was this case what what year are we talking uh, about? i have it in 86 1586. Because it's it's interesting that um, it that it's it says that the I mean we don't know if this is true might not be but it says that the land has been um, in, enclosed three score years and above. Mm. So that 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 would take us back to pre 1526, which is is quite early, isn't it, for enclosing? I don't know that much about it, but um, like. I, I had it in my head that the enclosure started a bit later on, but I guess it depended on the landowner. Yeah, um, Liza was next, and then Eric, and then Rachel. Yeah, so um, the the particular uh, enclosure that was torn down in this case, um, he says that it had been, what is it, enclosed, hedged, and bounded for three for more than three score years um and 
And, and also it was named Myrie Close. And usually when something is named Close, it's because uh, it's enclosed somehow. Uh, so was this part of the common land or wa was this, um, what was this more the, the equivalent of, of what those yahoos in Washington state did to the Malheur Wildlife Refuge? That I do not know. I'm sorry to say it was, was it Eric or Alan next? Uh, you said Eric, but I didn't have a question. So. <laughs> oh, was it Alan then? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if one wants to debate when enclosure started, you could make a plausible argument for 1066, when large chunks of what had been community land were nicked by the, uh, the followers of William the Bastard. Um, but it continued on until oh, 18th, late 18th century. Um, and you could argue also into the Highland Clearances, which I think went into the early 19th. Yeah. Rachel. Even though it's not in the UK, when I was taking, you know, art history courses a long time ago in college, the, um, there's a lot of these peasant paintings of them just uh, in the fields, you know, down and working and things like that, because I think there were like um, peasant uprisings in some places. And I wonder if it's, uh, you know, because of issues like this, you know, the, the lords of the manor coming and taking more from um, the common people actually, you know, um, working the land uh, for themselves and the discontentedness that is sort of bubbling under the surface and arising and, you know, sometimes breaking out into um, things like this because of the increasing rigidity of that class system and the ways in which uh, the, the wealth is evaporating up, you know, and old promises aren't exactly being kept. Mm. Yeah. Have we any more before we go on? Okay, and it is, so we now come to the joint and several answers of Rafe Seagrave, gentlemen, and Robert Wright, two of the defendants to the Bill of Complaint of Hugh Calverley, Esquire, the complainant. The said defendants say, and either of them saith, that the bill of complaint against them exhibited in this most honourable court of Star Chamber is, for the most part thereof, very untrue in the law to be answered unto, for diverse and sundry manifest faults and imperfections therein contained, and devised by the said complainant, a gentleman of great worship, wealth and ability, to put these defendants to wrongful and untrue suit and vexation, without any good occasion of suit given by these defendants or either of them, so to do as these defendants verily suppose. Nevertheless, the defendants, for a full and perfect declaration and setting forth of the whole truth, touching so much of the complaints bill as by any ways or means concerneth these defendants or either of them, the said defendants say, and either of them saith that in these defendants' opinions, by the death of the Sir George Calverley Knight in the bill of complaint named, and to these defendants' knowledges, there did descend unto the complainant Hugh Calverley as brother and next heir unto the Sir George Calverley, a manor in Scalford in the county of Leicester. By force and virtue whereof, the said complainant did, as these defendants do verily suppose, take the issue and profit thereof, and was thereof seized in his, in his demence as a fee, as those defendants think. But Rafe Seagrave, one of these defendants, further saith that he, being seized of a chief house or capital messwage in Scalford aforesaid, and of diverse and sundry lands and tenements to the same, belonging to an estate of inheritance to his own use, that true it is that he, this defendant, and all those whose estate he, ha he then had, of and in the same message lands and tenements, have accustomed and used to have, time whereof the memory of man knoweth not to the contrary, 
common in the parcel of ground called the Miri Close. At all times in the year, for the cattle commonable as appurtenant and belonging to the said messwage and lands. By force and virtue whereof this defendant, Rafe Seagrave, did in August last past, or thereabouts, command the said Robert Wright, one other of the defendants, being then his servant, to go to the parcel of ground called Myry Close, and put into the same a mare of the defendants, to take and use his common there, as well and lawful it was for him to do, in this defendant's opinion. But this defendant, Rafe Seagrave, did not go thither himself, but was absent from the same place. And this defendant, Robert Wright, for himself, saith that he, being servant unto Rafe Seagrave, another of the defendants, by his appointment and commandment in August last, or thereabouts, went to the said parcel of ground called Myri Close, and there pulled down a gap of that wideness that a cart might go in thereat. And there were no more persons with this defendant, Robert Wright, at that time, but only one John Tett, son of William Tett, who came thither to the defendant, but not with him. And the said John Tett did assist and help this defendant, Robert Wright, to pull down the same gap. And after the said gap so pulled down, this defendant, Robert Wright, did put into the said parcel of ground a mare of the said Rave Seagraves, which was done by this defendant in very quiet and peaceable manner, and not in any such riotous and disordered sort of manner, as the complainant hath alleged. For this defendant, Robert Wright, had not with him any manner of weapon, save only a little hazel staff without any pike in it. And after this being done, Robert Wright came from the said parcel of ground in peaceable manner, without other resistance offered, or any other force or violence by him done or committed, than as is above him by declared. Without that, that said Rafe Seagrave, Robert Wright and John Tett, not regarding the Queen's Majesty laws or statutes, nor the punishments thereof, have of late, that is to say the 18th day of August, in the 7 and 20th year of Queen's Majesty's reign, at Scalford aforesaid, within the said county of Leicester, Riotously and unlawfully, together with a great number of other lewd and evil disposed persons, with staves, pitchforks, swords, bucklers, and other weapons, as well as invasive as defensive, assembled themselves together in great routs, and there continued by a long space, to the great terror of your majesty's subjects there inhabiting, as in the said bill of complaint, is very untruly alleged and surmised. Nor that the said defendants and the said John Tett, having in their companies the said lewd and evil disposed persons, did then and there, the said 18th day of August, riotously and with force and arms against the Queen's Majesty's peace, enter into the manor of Scalford and the stone walls, fences and enclosures in and about one close parcel of the demence of the said manor, called and known by the name of Myrie Close, did pull down in riotous manner as in the said complainant's bill, is very untruly alleged. Nor that the said close hath been and continued, enclosed, hedged, and bounded these three score years and above, as in the said bill very truly, untruly alleged. Without that, that any other matter or thing mentioned or contained in the said bill, touching these defendants, or either of them, or effectual in the law to be answered unto, and in this answer, not sufficiently answered, traversed or denied, confessed or avoided, is true. All which matters these defendants are ready to aver and prove, as this honourable court shall order and award, and pray that they may be dismissed out of the same, with their reasonable costs and charges, in this behalf wrongfully sustained. Well, it's not a riot. From the sound of it. Uh, if Star Chamber were to hear it, it would have to be a riot. What we've got, it seems possible to me, is that we have got an absentee landlord who lives in Cheshire 
but has inherited this manor in Leicestershire. And a local gentleman with a capital house and tenements and tenants of his own, who regards himself as having the right to put beasts into this close. Uh, Sarah. It makes me think that perhaps um, with, the, with the previous owner, uh, the previous Sir Calvary, whether he was a George or whatever, the one who died um, before the current guy inherited, he probably had um, he probably had an arrangement with him that he could put his mare on that land, um, and they maybe had an informal arrangement. And then when he, the, the guy dies and the and, and the estate is inherited by someone who isn't local, uh, um, they they then you know that's where the the, the mm. conflict arises and, and, and maybe that he builds it into a bigger case than it actually was in order to get it heard by the Star Chamber. It's, it's possible, but I mean, he never says he was there by permission. He says it's commonable. Mm. He has commonable beasts and they have a right because of the, the, the place where he lives. The, the, his, his holding gives him also a right to put so many beasts for so many days of, or into the common. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a nice measurement that, that, that it's uh, a, a, a gap big enough for a cart to go through. Uh, and it's a stone wall which leads me to believe that it's not a recent erection. Any more for any more before we go on? Liza. Presumably it's a dry stone wall, which is how they're able to pull down enough so a cart can get through. I'm, I'm not sure what the field walls are like in Leicestershire. But yes, maybe. Um, I, it, it's going to be interesting to see how much of this is planned in advance and how much of this was totally spontaneous. Right, shall we continue? Yep, good. Uh, the answer of John Tett, one of the defendants to the Bill of Complaint of Hugh Calverley Esquire Complainant. The said defendant by protestation says that the said Bill of Complaint against him and others exhibited into this most honorable court of Star Chamber is for so much as thereof, as by any ways or means doth touch or concern this defendant very uncertain, imperfect and insufficient in the law to be answered unto. For divers and sundry manifest in apparent faults and imperfections therein contained, and devised by the said complainant, being a gentleman of great worship, wealth and ability, only to this end, to weary the said defendant, being a poor man without either just or lawful cause so to do. Nevertheless, the said defendant, the lawful and perfect declaration and setting forth of the whole truth, touching and concerning the material contents of the said bill, saith that he, this defendant, dwelling in Scalford within the county of Leicester, in a house with his father about the 18th day of August in the seven and 20th year of the reign of our sovereign lady, the Queen's Majesty that now is, did go from his father's house unto a place commonly called the Miry Close, lying and being within the fields and territories of Scalford aforesaid, having no person in his company, nor carrying with him any weapon at all, save only a pitchfork, which he carried usually with him. And at his coming thither, he found the said Robert Wright mentioned in the bill, servant of the said Master Ray Seagrave, in the bill likewise named, 
who was pulling down part of the fence, enclosing the close, which was common for the whole or for the most part of the inhabitants of Scalford. And this defendant, finding Robert Wright pulling down the said enclosure, did help him afterwards to pull the same down, which they did without any resistance or any other company with them. And after that, this defendant and Robert Wright had made an end thereof. For that time, they quietly departed, this defendant to his father's house, and Robert Wright, as, his, as this defendant thinketh, to Master Seagrave's house, his master. And after that used no other riotous dealings in and about the same piece or parcel of ground called Meyer Close. Without that, that the said Rafe Seagrave, Robert Wright, and this defendant, or any of them not regarding Queen's Majesty's laws nor statutes, nor the punishment thereof, did neither the time or in the bill of complaint mentioned, nor at any time before or since, riotously or unlawfully, together with a great number of other lewd and evil disposed persons with staves, pitchforks, swords, bucklers, and other weapons, as well invasive as defensive, assembled themselves together in great routs, and there continued by a long space in great terror and a fearing of Her Majesty's subjects then inhabiting. Nor that Rafe Seagrave, Robert Wright, and John Tett, this defendant, having in their companies the said lewd and evil disposed persons did, then and there, the said 18th day of August, riotously and with force and arms against the Queen's Majesty's peace, enter into manner of Scalford and the stone walls, fences and enclosures in and about any close, parcel of the demesnes, demonies of the said manor, called or known by the name of Meyer Close, did pull down in such sort as in the said bill of complaint is untruly alleged or in any other manner and form than before in this answer is truly declared or that all the said close hath been and continued enclosed and hedged these three score years and above. For this defendant thereunto saith that part thereof was enclosed not much above twenty years agone, but did, com but did lie common. And without that, that any other, any other matter or thing mentioned or declared in the said bill concerning this defendant, material or effectual in the law to be answered unto, and in this answer not sufficiently answered, traversed or denied, confessed and avoided, is true to the knowledge of this defendant. All which matters, this defendant is ready to aver and proof as this most honorable court shall order and award, and prayeth to be missed, dismissed out of the same with his reasonable costs and charges in this behalf wrongfully sustained. Right, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's the... Um, Tet and Wright are selling, telling more or less the same story. They didn't conspire beforehand. One met the other and lent a hand. That's their story. Um, we're then going to move on to the interrogatories. I have here got some snatches of the answers but it's going to be mostly interrogatory. Is there any comments before we pass on? I, I apologize, oh, Alan. Yeah, just a quick one. I, it may confuse the listener that what happened is for convenience, the responses um, are coming from the same person. We've just split them across a number of voices to avoid people having huge chunks of text to deal with. Yes, uh, except that the first response was from two people. Yeah. Um, uh, Seagrave and Wright, and I split that up more or less between two people. The third one, yes, did have a numerous voices. Um, 
that there were in fact two answers to the same bill. I, I mean, it's possible to get nine or 10 answers to a bill if there are a lot of um, uh, risk, uh, if there are a lot of defendants and they all have different stories to tell. Some saying this is nothing to do with me and the others saying if we were entirely justified. So you get quite a, a, a separation sometimes between the various defendants. But here you've got two sets, one of them, Seagrave and Wright, Seagrave saying I wasn't there and Wright saying it wasn't a riot and it wasn't pre-planned. And then you've got Tet saying it wasn't a riot and it wasn't pre-planned. Okay. Right. Um, we've now gone to the last set. Oh no, we, 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 we're, we're just starting the interrogatories, aren't we? These are the questions that are put by Calverley. And there are two sets of them. The second set, actually, I have some answers, but we'll read the first set first. So these are interrogatories to be administered on the behalf of Hugh Calverley Esquire against Rafe Seagrave, gentleman, defendant. In premise, whether were you present in or around about the 18th day of August last past at Sculford within the county of Leicester when one, Robert Wright and John Tett, two other of the defendants did pull down a wall that enclosed the that enclosed the close there of the said plaintiffs called Myrie Close. And how far were you then distant from them? What weapon had you at the same time? And whether did you appoint or command them? or either of them, to break down the said wall? And whether did you, or by your staff, or otherwise, show and appoint them, or either of them, where the same should be broken? And how much thereof should be pulled down? And what weapons had the said Robert Wright and John Ted with them at the breaking down of the said wall? And what other persons were there besides yourself to aid and assist them to do the same fact? I too. Whether did you, when one Whitworth's man told you you did the plaintiff wrong to pull down his walls, make answer again, you would pull them down whatsoever came of it, or words to the like effect? And where were you when you made this answer, and how was it, and when was it made? Item, whether have you or your tenants had and used any common within the said close, called my close, with your cattle, in the lifetime of Sir George Calvley, Carv Knight deceased, or Sir Hugh called the Knight deceased, father of the said Sir George. And if you have, then when, how often, and which of you have had such come? And with what cattle? And how long is it since the enclosure was made? And whether any usage of common has been had there since the same enclosure before this pulling down of the said wall? Item. What manner of common do you pretend to have in the same close, and for what cattle, and for what season of the year, in respect of your tenants, and how has it been used during the time of your remembrance? Okay, we'll move straight on unless there's a problem, no. Uh, interrogatories to be ministered on the part of Hugh Calverley, Esquire, plaintiff, against Robert Wright, defendant, and I've joined with this some of the deposition of John Tett, and Emma is going to read for Tett. Imprimis, whether do you know the close called Mari Close at Sculford in the county of Leicester, parcel of the inheritance of Hugh Calverley, Esquire? I know the close in Skullfield called Mary Close, and the close is parcel of the inheritance of Master Hugh Calverley. Item, whether did you, by the commandment of one Rafe Seagrave, break down the walls of the said close, called the Myrie Close, at Sculford aforesaid, parcel of the inheritance of Hugh Calverley Esquire? I did not, by the commandment of Rafe Seagrave, break down the walls of the close called Myrie Close, mentioned in the article, 
but on a lane and which is beside unto the close called the miry close, that parcel of ground, to this defendant's understanding, being not by part the complainant's inheritance, this defendant and Robert Wright did by the commandment or appointment from the Ray Seagrave break and pull down that part of the wall which did enclose the parcel of ground to the close called the miry close. But this defendant and the Robert Wrights did not otherwise pull or break down any part of the wall of miry close. Item whether was the said Wraith Seagrave present at the pulling down of the said wall and whether did he appoint you with his staff how far you should pull down and in what place and what person or persons did help you to break down the same? And what weapon had you with you at the same time? And what weapons had the other that assisted and helped you to do the same? Rafe Seagrave was not present at the pulling down of the wall, nor did he with his staff mark or any wise appoint us how far we should pull down the wall. Neither did he tell us what place we should pull down the wall, Otherwise, than the, the Rave Seagrave, having been with my father and moved him to pull down the wall, or to send me to pull down the wall, my father did send me to pull down the same. And no person or persons beside Robert Wright helped me to pull down the wall. And at the time of the pulling down of the wall, I was weaponed with a pitchfork and Robert Wright a plain stuff. Item. Right, um... Whether did Rafe Seagrave command or require John Tett to help pull down the said wall? And whether do you think the said Tett came to help you by Rafe Seagrave entreaty or commandment or of his own accord? Rafe Seagrave did not command or request me to help pull down the wall in any other sort than Upper said. And my coming to so pull down the same was not of my own accord, but by the will of my father. And I was not entreated nor commanded by Ray Seagrave in the doing of the act. Item. Whether did the said Rafe Seagrave or any other man, to your knowledge, enter the common with cattle in the said close during the time of the life of Sir George Calverley Knight deceased? And if so, then when and how often and by whom was such common used? Item, whether did you see any cattle of any commoners in the said close called the miry close during the time of the life of Sir Hugh Calvary, the knight deceased, using and taking the common, which they claimed as their right? And if you did, then who were they that so used their common? With what cattle did they use it? And how long time did they so use it? Item, how long time have you served the right, the said Brief Seagrave, and whether during the time of your being with him, did he or any of his tenants or neighbours have any common or pasture in the said close before the pulling down of the said wall? Thank you. Well, we've got an interesting uh, situation here. Uh, Seagrave never, never asked Tet to help in pulling down the wall. He just told Tet's father to send him along. <laughs> it's what you might, what I believe is known as a cutout. Rachel. No, I was gonna say, um, some of these things uh, in a modern court of law, I wonder if they'd be considered uh, like leading questions based yeah. off of some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Leading questions were, were what it was all about. <laughs> yes, uh, but it's very useful because it, the leading question enables the reader today to discover what points it is that they're trying to bring out. But I think, I mean, Tet's answer never mentioned the fact, except that he went home to his father's house. He never mentions the fact that it was his father who sent him and that his father had been asked by Seagrave to send him along. I mean, it's perfectly possible that uh, Tet's father was Seagrave's tenant. 
I, I mean, there's this pretense that there isn't a preordained, there isn't a plan, there isn't a, uh, nobody's working on this beforehand. But obviously they were. Liza. Yeah, because if there's no premeditation, then it's not riot, right? That's right. Or, it does seem to be a good faith effort on the part of the court to establish uh, or to compare accounts as to whether this actually was common land and what the specific rights of the people using it as common land were, mm. uh, if it was. Yes, I mean... Could... Yes, yeah, somewhere in there, there will be some answers. Whether they're true answers or not is another matter altogether. Rachel. She's forgotten what she was going to ask. Anybody else want to chip in their two pennies? Because if not, I have something that I will... Ah, Rachel has remembered. Yes. I was going to ask, uh, when you showed up to court, and how, how was it done back then? Was it innocent until proven guilty or guilty until proven innocent? Well, if... The Attorney General was bringing the case. It was rather guilty until proved innocent. In theory, though, it was always innocent until proved guilty. Uh, that's long been a, um, a, a maxim. But of course, when a jury can be brought before Star Chamber for having given the wrong verdict, the government does have quite a lot of um, sway in cases in which they are interested. What they're mostly interested in doing is making sure people pay their taxes and don't cause riots. Hmm. Uh, before we go on, there's something that I really, really want to do, and it's going to need your cooperation. Um, I would very much like everybody to go into lurk mode. That is, turn off your screen and sound so that I alone will be on the picture. And if you, if you go into um, speaker view, you know the, how to do it? If you go top right uh, where it says view and click speaker, then what you get is not a big me, but a big picture of a deposition. Now you will say to yourself, that looks pretty difficult and you're not wrong. But what you have here is something that we have just read. So the first line that's fully visible is John Tett, spelled T-E-T-E, -T -E, of Scalford in the county, the next line is in the county of Leicester, and the next line is Weaver, Sworn, etc. Now, if you then go down another three lines, it says, called the miry close and now you may not believe me but it certainly is what it says now these are a lot easier to read when you've read the um the the, the questions to which the answers are given this is to the first he saith he yeah, doth know uh, is the top is the top line of John Tett's answers. Um, so this is why you have got such a limited amount of responses because I didn't have very much time. Now, if you would like to return, nice people to speaking and, to, and seeing, I just wanted the folks at home to understand that this is not 
altogether simple. Alan. Yeah, I mean, thank you for what you've done on this. One thing that struck me two or three times going through is this description uh, that comes up um, in responses describing um, the complainant as being a gentleman of great worship, wealth and ability. So there does seem to be a little bit of um, groveling going on, uh, which makes me suspect that this is largely a dispute between minor gentry, as in um, Seagrave, and more major gentry, Calvary. I think you're right in that it is a dispute between two gentlemen. But I also think they're throwing themselves on the protection of the, co the court by saying he's, he's an important man, he's got a lot of wealth, he's got a shed full of lawyers, he's ready to go. Um, and I think that they are, they are saying very firmly, um, this court was set up it's a prerogative court. It's, it's set up to protect us from such people. Uh, all right, it's turning now into something that enforces government policy, but in its original form, Star Chamber was there in order to protect the vulnerable and the, 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 the small people uh, from... Um, partly from people who were uh, uh, employed by the crown but misusing their powers, and partly from people who had enormous economic advantage and were uh, being unpleasant with it. So I don't see it as grovel. I see it as, a, as a, we are the righteous, uh, but he's more powerful than we are. So. This is something for the Queen to really step in and help us with. Do we have further? Rachel. No, um, I was just gonna say that, I guess that sort of um, link that we've got in both of these cases that we, we, we've done today, the other case being in another video, but um, of these uh, very powerful individuals or almost conglomerates versus the little guy. Um, however, the little guy defines themselves, whether they're in the country or in the city or smaller towns. You know, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, was it Leicester? Leicester? Leicester. Uh, Leicester. <laughs> Call it Lester, Samina, <laughs> Sabina, Demean. <laughs> They're all very, very, it, it's all Norman French. Don't worry about it. The Brits get it wrong all the time. When you, when you move to Br Britain, you go through three stages. The first is when you mispronounce place names uh, but accidentally. The second is when you've learnt how they're pronounced and you pronounce them scrupulously perfectly and you look down your nose at anyone who doesn't and the third stage is when you start mispronouncing them deliberately to piss off the british people <laughs> i'll remember that i'll remember that yeah alan a uh, standard question do we know if this case or the one we did earlier actually got any further than the original depositions i doubt it um, I don't, I mean, this is obviously not a riot. Uh, nobody seems to be able to bring any proof that it is a riot. Um, and uh, this sort of dispute needs to escalate a long way. I'm not sure what sort of pull Calverley had. I mean, it may be that he um, that he was powerful enough to, um, 
to, to get it heard, but I don't think so. Um, and if I wouldn't have thought that Star Chamber, because he was the one who took it to Star Chamber, I don't think that Star Chamber would be his route if he was a local magnate. I think, in fact, his, he, he would have other means than um, Star Chamber. Are we, it's been a long afternoon. Are we done? Pretty much. Okay. Well then, all that remains is for me to thank our wonderful readers once again and require you all, you folks at home, as is your bounden duty to pray for the Queen. <laughs>